guys. Welcome to the Human Biography Podcast. On today's episode, I've got my good friend, my family, Oreen Askew, better known as DJ Osho. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, Oreen, we've had a big adventure. We uh, created a beautiful documentary about your life, um, Human Biography, Silo Entertainment, and our team enjoyed our time together. Let's talk a little bit about that. We can show some clips of it in this video. What was the process like for you? It was really cool, actually. I felt really comfortable. And it was just like bringing a crew along with what I do every day. Yeah. And that's what I've always wanted, actually, because it's really hard when you're like a sole proprietor, basically out there doing your own thing to have someone capture it. So I feel really fortunate to have met you, Sherrod, and, and the crew. Yeah, and thank you. And yeah, it just it just felt like cameras were following me around yeah. with with what I do. Like, let's talk about what you do, because <laughs> there's a that's a big that's a loaded what you do. Um, tell me about all the things during this time of this documentary, and we'll go into what you're doing today. But during that time, tell me all the different things you were involved with. Well, I had some DJing gigs, not very many DJing gigs, just because of the pandemic and everything had to be virtual or in a studio. Um, motivational speaking. Um, land acknowledgements for our territory, just lots of stuff. <laughs> a lot of BLM stuff going on at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, BLM as well. Um, that was, some of the footage that you got was uh, after George Floyd was murdered. Yeah. So there was a lot of uh, rallies going on um, in Vancouver as well. I think, and I want people to know um, that when you come into an event, that could be a BLM event, an Indigenous event, a Pride event, that those are all your communities. So I want to talk about your identity and let people know because some, some people say, what does she mean about land, land, land acknowledgement? What is she talking about? Ooh. So tell, tell me about your background and, 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 your, and your different communities that you are belong to. Yeah, yeah, I'm Afro-Indigenous and Two-Spirited. Um, I'll say the Afro, the black side is from my father who's from Gary, Indiana, and my mother, the Indigenous side is from my mother, and she's from the Squamish Nation. So. I'm a part of one of the host territories uh, of Vancouver, which is Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh. And so when I do a land acknowledgement, uh, phones are getting off the hook for those because they want somebody there who's actually from the territory mm. to come and like either do a prayer or just let people know where they are and what land is under their feet. And uh, I'm two-spirited. And to me, uh, the definition of two-spirited is uh, a masculine and feminine spirit, but it's different for everybody else. So I don't want to say that that's the textbook definition yeah, because right. it's it's forever changing. And I really thank the young people for teaching me that and yeah. and it's progressing and growing. So that's how I identify. So it's one thing to be part of those communities, but you take active part in all those communities as well. Um, let's start with Squamish Nation and your involvement um, before in politics and being active. What made you want to be proactive and active? Yeah. Well, I just felt like something was missing, you know, especially being from all these different communities, you know, and, and this is something I tell the young people, trying to get them interested in politics. Like if we're not at the table, things aren't going to change for us. So I've always been really mindful of that and uh, an elder nominated me in December of 2017 for his conversation council and I got in uh, by like 20 votes and it was an amazing uh, four years great experience to learn like what uh, politics is all about and wow. what goes on when the doors are closed yeah. I saw it yeah. so <laughs> um, yeah and it's funny because I didn't get voted in this last term mm -hmm. but when I told the young people, they were just like, you know what, Antio, you're going to make more change being off of council. So I didn't really know what that meant at the time, but not, I totally do now. <laughs> well, I remember when you were going through that time, and um, it, it probably was very disappointing, as, as it would be for anybody, but there's other, there's light, and we'll talk about the light as well. You know, I've spent time with your mom. I've interviewed her. Um, she is, I feel like, such a power, powerful person in such a soft and kind uh, human sort of sense. And tell me about your influence of your mom in your life. Yeah, my mom's amazing. I think I think we have like a comedian competition every time we see each other because we're all just trying to make each other laugh. That's great. But uh, I grew up uh, with her being a single mom and yeah. I'm the youngest out of four children. So I'm the baby of the whole entire family. And uh, she's she's amazing and I was, I just got to watch her struggle and work every single job that she could. I remember her working at 
A and W, Grouse Mountain, this Italian restaurant called Umbertino's, and then she got a job at my school actually. Wow. Yeah, at Queen Mary Elementary in North Van, yeah. and she was the Indigenous support worker there for like twenty five years. Wow. So it, it kind of had it, its perks with your mom being at your school, but yeah. then sometimes it didn't. My friends would be like, "Oh, your mom's because so your mean. mom's at the school. Your mom's <laughs> yeah. so mean." I'm like, "Ah." <laughs> <laughs> um, what has happened since um, leaving council and, and opportunities that have come to you? I want to talk about all the things you're involved in. So I've been working on music. I have a single coming out later this yeah. year called Status and Clarity. Yeah. We shot the music video. Congratulations. Thank you. i um, working on an EP that will be out later this year. Um, Some campaigns with different brands. Yeah, like I'm working on this, or I did this campaign with the Whitecaps, the Vancouver Whitecaps. So right. they came out to my community and followed me around for a day with cameras and yeah. made this amazing video. Yeah. Um, just their city is my city campaign. Yeah. It was really cool. So they're following around people from the community who are from Vancouver and yeah. just have a really cool story to tell. Wow. Thinking about getting a booking agent because I just can't, you do, can't, uh, like, can't keep up with all this stuff. And, 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 and when do you... Like, we, we talked about this as well, uh, the balance of doing and resting. Mm -hmm. And uh, you taught me that, actually, during our time of shoot is um, because everybody definitely loves you and they want your time. But there's got to be, like, a balance for you to actually say, hey, I need to just rest. And you and I saw that you went through, even with our work, um, can you tell me the balance of, of, of working, providing for the for people, versus providing for yourself and just getting rest. Yeah, definitely. I, I would highly recommend it. I do it too, is, is getting um, getting a counselor. Mm. As soon as I actually was voted on council four years ago, I got one just because those stress levels were unreal. But I still see her once a week. Yes. Like, just because I'm not on council, like the stress is still kind of there. Of course. But um, but yeah, rest when you can, like when it's downtime. Right now is not downtime for me. So yeah. I have to plan it out and, and rest in between and make sure I'm kind of eating well and like movement, working out when I can. I should probably do that a lot more. We all could use that a little yeah, bit Yeah, definitely. So, and it, it's the thing, I know my schedule, I know what's coming up. Mm -hmm. I just have to take care of myself. And it's, it's funny how like self-care isn't kind of like put up there, yeah. you know, um, or put out there. Like it's really important. It is that's really right. important that's because... Right. If your mind and your body aren't well, like the rest of you isn't gonna go, and that's how that's how our people get burnt out, especially our activists and yeah. community workers and stuff. Yeah, you're gonna be recording, and do you think this will take on a new movement? Like you, you've already started recording, but I mean, you're gonna record more, you make more music videos. Um, tell me the future of your music. Yeah, I'm. I'm really your fortunate. Your voice. I'm yeah. really fortunate to be working with Jane Aurora, yeah, who's in amazing. the documentary. And she's helped me out with like grant writing and things like that because in this industry that's how yes. that's how stuff is done. So grants I didn't even know about, and she's amazing. And she straight up asked me, "Well, who do you want to work for or work with?" And I said, "Well, I want to work with some like black and indigenous artists that I really like." And she goes, "Well, what are their names?" And I said, "Well, Carrie McClelland. He's an amazing R&B singer, that's right. and we've linked." We've linked quite a bit, and he's super cool. He just he kind of reminds me of my dad, sort of. I like Kerry. Yeah, yeah. he's he's Afro American yes. from the U.S. I believe he's from Detroit. That's right. So I want to work with him and one of my friends, mentors, like amazing people, Kenny Starr. Yeah, of course, yeah. I've known her for. We started doing workshops together and going yeah. to indigenous communities like almost ten, ten years ago. And she's so cool. She's so sweet yes. and just we message each other all the time yeah. just about what's going on in the world and um, she's been through it all. Like I tell people, she used to be signed to Def Jam. Wow. Should we talk about pre-internet times? Wow. Yeah. So wow. she has a lot of knowledge and she shared so much with me and just wants nothing in return. Just. We're just really good friends, and she's done music for the L Word, which I'm like huge fan yeah, of. So yeah, just but but I have awesome. to say this to you: you're you're there. You're you're living that level of of of, of work ethic, um, uh, the level of art artistry. That's what I'm saying. I've 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 we've we've worked together, we've created together, and I, I've I've watched you glow and and rise and and actually go through tough times in in, in this whole uh, era of of everybody having optics through social media, knowing what's going on, you know, what's what's ha happening. But your positivity is what really, like, inspires me every time. It could be the toughest times, but you're like, okay, 
let's uh, got to keep going. <laughs> and so last one of my last questions is what keeps you going? Yeah, I, I talk about it a lot in my motivational speeches. Um, I, my place was involved in a house fire as soon as I started my business and probably the scariest thing I've ever, ever had to go through. And the only thing I thought to grab was my MacBook and my turntables. So, wow. you know, going through that, um, all of the trauma with the fire and, and getting out without a scratch on me, not all of my stuff, but without a scratch on me. And, and, uh, that just totally changed my outlook on life. Like there could be so much, there could be so many more worse things going on in your life. So when people complain about certain things, I'm just like, Whoa, I try to remind them, like, it's not, it's not that bad. Like yeah. your problems are someone else's dreams, yeah. you know? Yeah.